Greetings to Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to episode 184 of Ham Radio Answers. We have gobs of snow outside, and the temps are in the low teens Fahrenheit, so any antenna activity is ruled out for the moment. So today we cover the introduction to the Anytone D878UV dual band FM and DMR handheld radio with many, many features. Dwayne Reese, N6DMR, the Anytone USA technical representative, asked me if I'd like to review one, and I jumped at the chance. The D878UV has GPS and APRS features also. By the way, the D means digital, in this case DMR, and the UV means it's dual band, supporting both the VHF for 2 meter and UHF for 70 centimeter bands. Any tone is part of Kijang and makes a higher end radio. The radio is up there with some of the Japanese radios price-wise at $219 on Amazon or from several ham radio vendors. You can find a link in the text below the video and also on my website at dcastler.com slash Amazon. The Anytone D878UV comes in a nicely packed box with the radio, the battery, a strap, a belt clip, the programming cable, the charger drop-in station, and the power supply wall wart. The antenna connection is male on the radio and female on the antenna. The radio itself is remarkably sturdy and seems primarily made for the public service market where radios take a real beating. The public service market is going to DMR and P25 and away from FM. DMR is becoming popular in ham radio, so this same radio is marketed to hams. The radio takes a Kenwood style speaker mic. Note that the battery comes with some charge, but it would be best if you plop the radio into the charger until the light turns green, which could take three hours or so. The charge station takes 12 volts, so you should be able to use 12 volt from your automobile as input, but monitor it for heating. Several other Chinese radios use 10 volts for charging, thus making it hard to charge in a mobile environment. Not this one. Let me speak for a moment about the radio's FCC certification. You'll remember the FCC's enforcement advisory from September, which warns about uncertified radios being sold in the U.S. that are causing interference problems with licensed services. Well, this device is certified. Let's take a closer look at that. The FCC certification number is inside the handheld, visible when you take the battery off. The FCC ID is TK4, which is the ID for any tone, followed by D878UV for the model. The actual files are available on the FCC website, as shown here. This is the attestation statement which is the cover letter for the FCC file package. I took this from the FCC website. Note the tight rope walking statement from the manufacturer. They, quote, acknowledge that this device will not be marketed to USA users with the frequency band which is not allowed by rule part 90, unquote. That includes the public service frequencies, by the way. They go on to state, quote, it is a violation of FCC rules if this device is operated on unauthorized frequencies inside the USA, unquote. In other words, it's up to the users to use it properly and not exceed the terms of their license. It continues, programming of this product's transmit frequencies can be performed only by the manufacturer or by service or by maintenance personnel. The operator can't program transmit frequencies using the equipment's external operation controls, meaning the uh, keypad. 
On another statement, the company says, quote, also, equipment programming is the responsibility of authorized service personnel. This digital radio complies with rules in that the operator cannot directly program the transmit frequencies using the normally accessible external controls. Oh, really? Well, guess what? The keypad is easily unlocked, and the instructions for doing so are in the owner's manual. But better, your ham license makes you a service or maintenance person for amateur radio purposes. It's one of the unique things about a ham license. We not only operate our own equipment, but we can maintain it, modify it, do whatever we want to it, okay? So, just use the programming software and you can do anything with this radio you'd like, except of course, use it to transmit outside the ham bands. Note that this FCC filing was made after the FCC enforcement notice was released. As far as any tone is concerned, they're cool with the FCC. Let's look at the radio's features. It covers the amateur 2 meter band as well as the 70 centimeter band. It is both an ordinary FM radio as well as a digital mobile radio or DMR, both at the tier 1 and tier 2 levels, which covers all amateur activity, hams don't make use of tier 3. It has a truly massive memory, 4,000 channels, 10,000 DMR talk groups, which is more talk groups than there are, as you can see from this list, 150,000 digital contacts, which will include everyone in the world who has a DMR ID, 250 zones, 250 channels per zone. It has four power levels, 6, 4, 2.5, and 1 watt power output. Oddly, there's no way to directly change the power level, so I set a programmable function button so that the long press cycles through the power levels. The battery is quite large, and in fact, is a significant portion of the radio's thickness. It has a capacity of 3100 milliamp hours or 3.1 amp hours. That's a big battery for a handheld. The radio is also IP54 water and dust resistant. That's the lowest level of ingress protection as shown on this chart, which means it has limited dust ingress protection and is protected from water spray, incidental water spray, with limited water ingress protection. I'm not going to say this is a lot, but it is something. The manual is lucid and helpful, written in not quite native speaking, but remarkably good English. Every menu step is described. One thing missing is a diagram of the display and what those little icons represent. I recommend spending some time with the manual with the radio by your side. I like the manual in that it isn't an obscure reference, but clearly written with excellent summaries of functions. Now, the radio has two features I won't explore in this video, GPS and APRS. The radio can tell you your location if you're outside where you can get a good GPS signal. It can also tell you the location of someone else whose radio is GPS equipped. And the APRS is both the traditional analog as well as digital. The radio also has a roaming feature. Look for a later video on those subjects. As I alluded to before, there are five programmable buttons on the radio. PF1 and PF2 are on the side below the push to talk button and PF3 is a small, deliberately hard to press button on the top of the radio. On the face of the radio are P1 and P2. You can change the defaults for these buttons using the menu or the programming software. It's easier with the programming software. One additional feature that may make this radio attractive to those who already have DMR radio networks that they deal with in the course of their employment or volunteer work. 
You can put multiple DMR IDs into the radio, such as your ham radio DMR ID, plus your work-related DMR ID. You select one ID for ham radio, and then when you select your other ID, the radio works on your employment-related frequencies, such as first responders and firefighters. Note to use this radio on those frequencies, you need to have your designated maintenance person set up that part of the radio. I've not seen another radio that can do this. So, let's talk about using the radio. One odd feature is that after you turn it on, you have to wait about four seconds for the screen to show anything. Be sure when you put the radio down after turning it off that it really is turned off. My personal thinking is they ought to put up a splash screen immediately upon power on. The audio quality is okay, but note that DMR itself can cause poor audio quality if the link is poor. If you hear digital sounding audio, it may just be that the radio link is poor. I used the radio via my 10 element 70 centimeter beam to work the Grand Junction DMR repeater, W0BX, about 80 miles away as the crow flies. I got good signal reports using TAC 310, a nationwide talk group. I also used it easily with my local hotspot, an open spot 1.1, also on TAC 310. TAC 310 is a talk group which like all talk groups is basically a party line, in this case, US wide. There are a gazillion talk groups, as you can see in this list. In theory, you can pick any one of these talk groups. TAC 310 is very popular in the United States. I found that the audio is quite good. This is Wayne in Grand Junction, N9 Echo Golf Tango, you copy. Indoors, the lowest volume setting could still be rather loud. You can program the radio either through the menu or the programming software to lower the volume indoors. The screen quite simply cannot be read under any lighting conditions unless it is active. As the radio comes, the screen will stay active for a rather short period of time after pressing any key. This time is programmable, and I set it for 30 seconds. I may yet set it longer. There is a setting for the display to always remain active, but that would run the battery down more quickly. In sunlight, the screen can be read fairly easily, but you might want to put the screen in shadow for easier reading. Note that when the screen is active, the radio's keys are also backlit. There's no flashlight on the radio. The rig also receives the FM broadcast band. You'll have to program a PF key to get there, as I can't find any other way with the rig's default setup. I chose to use a PF1 long press to toggle the FM radio on and off. You can add channels in the programming software, punch in the frequency directly up to the megahertz and then use the VFO knob to set the digit after the decimal point, or just roll the VFO knob to the frequency you want. Let's talk a little about programming via your Windows, not Mac, your Windows computer. The manual says to go to the AnyTone site to download the CPS, or Customer Programming Software. Indeed, the CPS is there. However, what is not there is the driver for the programming cable. So I would suggest a source such as PowerWorks.com. Hover your mouse over Help, then select Software Downloads. Then click on the AnyTone AT-D878UV V1.09 link. Note, and this is a bit tricky, be sure that you install version 1.09 of the programming software 
or whatever is current when you view this, be careful because version 1.07 is still in the wild. Next, scroll further down on the PowerWorks page and get the driver software. It will install software for a cable that starts with the letters GD. Note, I found that Windows insists on installing its own driver, which won't work with the cable. To keep the two from competing, right-click on the Start button and choose Device Manager. With the cable connected to both the computer and the radio, and the radio on, if the GD Device Virtual COM port has a caution sign on it, then right-click on the extra USB serial device and disable it. Then the GD device can work properly. Once you have this set up, start the version 1.09 programming software, click on Set, and select Set COM. Choose the number that corresponds with the device manager's assigned number for the GD port. Then you can read the radio, make any changes you want, save those changes on your PC, and then write the radio with the new software. Again, like all other radios, when you write, you write the whole thing. Note that there are two things you can write separately. The digital contact list, or the other data. The other data is the one you want. Note that the sum total of the quote other data is in fact the code plug. You may be lucky to live in an area where there are pre-built code plugs. If so, you can write those to the radio, but be sure that your own personal DMR ID gets programmed into your radio too. That's where I'll end this video. We'll continue later to take a much deeper look or two at the programming. This is a high-end radio, and there are lots and lots of things you can get it to do. I'll talk about creating both digital and analog channels, and talk about things like talk groups, receive groups, zones, channels, scanning, and so on. By the way, if you need your own DMR ID, go to radioid.net slash register. You only need one ID, even if you have multiple radios. Do I recommend this radio? I wasn't sure when I first took it out of the box, as I had quite a bit of trouble locating the right software and a firmware update. The driver gave me fits at first, but if you use all the tips I've given you in this video, you can skip quite a bit of trouble and be in a position to program your radio fairly quickly. So, do I recommend this radio? Yes, absolutely. It's a high-end radio as reflected in the price. If that's what you'd like to have, go for it. In future videos, I'll highlight aspects of programming. In channel news, I'm pleased to report there are now nearly 46,000 Augies, meaning subscribers, worldwide. And I seem to be getting pretty regular with the Saturday YouTube live sessions held at noon U.S. Mountain Time, which is 1900 UTC. The Saturday live stream is devoted to answering your questions, whether posed at dcastler.com slash ask hyphen Dave or sent to hamradioanswers at gmail.com. I also try to answer questions posed during the live stream chat. If you have subscribed and clicked on the bell, you should get a notice as each session goes live. If you aren't, make sure the bell is clicked and also check your spam folder. You can also go directly to the live feed at youtube.com slash C slash David Kassler slash live. Note that it says David Kassler. This is different from my channel link, which is youtube.com slash users slash Dave Kassler. They've got Dave for the channel and David for the live stream. Go figure. Thanks for all your support, suggestions, and ideas. Please like and share this video. Please subscribe 
and also click the bell so you'll get an email notification of all new videos. I like to distribute knowledge widely and my videos are free for the viewing on YouTube. Thank you for the many patrons who are supporting this channel via patreon.com and to those who drop a little something into the tip jar at ke0og.net slash tip hyphen jar. All is most gratefully acknowledged and appreciated. Happy New Year to all. Until we next meet, 73.